Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Waffle Press Hangouts. I'm your host, Diego Crespo. With me today, as always, is Gina Versa. Yes, I'm here through Zoom. How are you doing? Doing, doing pretty good. You're, pretty you're well. Zooming pretty good now that we're using Zoom instead of yeah. Skype. We uh, banded Skype, threw it out, don't need it anymore. Yeah, fuck off, Skype. Um, yeah. This Jesus, was, uh, Zoom. That's how you know it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's good to be back. We haven't uh, podcasted for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So now we're gonna we're gonna keep our our content machine churning. Uh, just off the bat, off the top of the show, off the bat, mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, don't forget, Black Lives Matter, trans rights or human trans rights or human rights. Um, don't be an asshole. Wear your mask because the mask. subject of the show is today. But yeah, also, I, uh, I was just gonna also, say. Yeah, especially wear a mask. Especially wear all 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 that stuff's very important. Just just be a good person and don't be an asshole and don't yeah. vote for Donald Trump. And also welcome. Brandon Swafford, our old friend who has not been on the show since Christmas? No. Yeah. yeah Christmas. Was, yes. I yes. think Christmas was the last time. I got it right. Yeah. 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 Thank Welcome you for back. having me. No, thank you. Thank oh, it's yeah. good to be back. He uh, came over to my house and we reenacted a David Bowie music video. Yeah, no, that was amazing. That was uh, <laughs> one, of the, one of the highlights of my holiday, uh, yeah. which is saying a lot about my most recent holiday. But thank you guys for having me back on and give me something to look forward to in this age where it's the movie Groundhog Day every day. <laughs> that, that's, that's how I'm feeling. Every day it feels the same. And uh, we don't know when it's going to end. And we it started don't know. in March, too, like Groundhog Day. Oh, it's God. Day. That's yeah, right. Day. Oh, well, Brandon, let, let's catch up before we get into the, the topic of today's episode, which is masks, because we want to highlight that everyone should be wearing masks, even if it's not, even if it's not for you, it's for the people around you. Mm-hmm. Please take that into consideration. But Brandon, what have, have you been up to? How are you holding up? Do you need anything? We're not that far from each other. I have lots of toilet paper. You good? <laughs> Uh, my toilet paper is good. Uh, I have, my, my ass is clean. So and good, our, good. Our hygiene is more standpoint. important than ever. It, it really is, man. And uh, yeah, to, for, for me um, to stay staying, I, I've still been working every day and uh, also doing some more personal stuff. I've been drawing every day and oh. going outside and a little bit running with my mask on. Mask on, always mask on, yeah. never mask off. Don't be like Andrew Garfield in his Spider-Man movies where he's constantly taking his mask on, off. No, be, be <laughs> like be like Tom Holland, Spider-Man, what? mask on all times, yeah. all times. Uh, and yeah, but it's been a crazy time, man. It, this, is, this is unprecedented for sure. And uh, but yeah, how are you guys holding up? Uh, doing, doing well, had a... Uh... A little bit of a scare for uh, coronavirus. Got a self quarantine. My roommate had it, so had to go somewhere else, be alone in the desert for like two weeks. Not very fun. So more reason if you have uh, to wear a mat to uh, be safe. If you don't want to self quarantine, it's boring. But I didn't get it, so. Thank that's that's glad good. Hear, uh, glad to hear you're okay and mm-hmm. yeah. you didn't get it. And and this is a, an audio only recording podcast, but Gene's drinking water. Everyone drink lots of water if you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, if yes. you know someone who who is maybe having trouble getting a little bit of water, because I know some people are still having trouble doing that, make sure to help them out. Just help out your your fellow human being. Don't be a butthole. For me, I've been doing pretty good. Um, a neighborhood cat just had kittens, so I'm like oh. watching over them until they're they're older, because there's lots of coyotes in this vicinity. And uh, I've also adopted a family of raccoons who have taken residence in a local palm tree. They're oh. actually not obnoxious or hurting anyone or anything, which is nice. They, um, they are, however, very loud oh. because they 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 don't have. They're not very considerate of others. So don't <laughs> be like raccoons. Be, oh. be of others. Do but, they, uh, uh, they do they seal anything with their little bandit hat? No. I, I thought they were a neighborhood cat. So I tried to take a picture of them. I was like, oh, how cute. And I was like, this one looks bigger. What the hell? And then it was a raccoon. And it was just eating the leftover cat food. And I was like, so. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a wild animal. I'm not trying to pet it. But it was just, like, curious. And, like, what are you? And I was like, I am, I am me. <laughs> and, and now they just hang out. And they all just get along. So nice. I'm, I'm now 
king of the animals um, cool, in Riverside man. County. Yeah, yeah, which is great. Uh, raccoons and... are also great because they wear masks and constantly <laughs> clean their face. <laughs> exactly. Raccoons do actually, they're dirt, they, they clean themselves a lot. Mm -hmm. um, too much because sometimes they leave water out for the neighborhood cats and then, boy, is that thing fucking filthy the morning after because they, they literally clean themselves all the time. They're very, they try to be clean creatures, I guess, but whatever. Raccoons yeah. are weird. I, I love them and hate them and fear them. But, and, and much lighter, better news. What are we watching lately? Brandon, what, what are you even watching in quarantine? Uh, I've been catching up on a lot of old movies, uh, stuff I haven't seen. Like I watched um, Ghost World for the first time today. Nice. Uh, with uh, Scarlett Johansson and Steve Buscemi, who's fantastic. It was, it was pretty good. Uh, I've been watching Avatar The Last Airbender, which I know yes. you're going to get to in a second. Bojack Horseman, uh, Dead to Me. I don't know if you've guys seen Dead to Me with um, Christine Applegate. And, it's yes. on my list. It, it's, it's on my list. Yes, it, oh, it's fantastic. And Lydicar Lalini is amazing in it. Uh, James Marsden's great in it. It's it's fascinating. Like every scene, I'm biting my nails, and I'm not a TV person, so that's coming a lot for me. Like I binge the whole thing in like in less than a week. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. I highly recommend it. Uh, and uh, I've been watching a lot. Of, every time Netflix comes out with an original movie, I've been watching that. I've been watching the the two or three original things from Disney Plus. <laughs> uh, uh, Hamilton is awesome. I don't know if you guys are Hamilton fans or if you guys had a chance to watch it yet. But uh, I oh here, go ahead, Gene. No, I was yeah. just gonna say it's great, and see what you guys had to say. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I watched it. Was uh, yeah, it was nice, nice little, just nice. Was, I, yeah, I'm not I, a big I, uh, musical theater fan. Oh, <laughs> oh really? I love I love musical theater and I love movie musicals. So I, I got I got if we can just get into a sidebar topic, I got some beef with people trying to make it an Oscar contender. Don't oh. do that. Just make oh. a, a movie adaptation down the line. Then that can be nominated for an Oscar. You can't, it's Broadway, Tony's movies are for Oscars. That's how it works. There's order, <laughs> society. You yeah. Live in a society. No, I'm with, I'm with you on that. Uh, as much as I love it, I don't think it should count. And I, I, I can barely, like, count it like, oh, it's the best film of the year. Well, well of course it is. Well, one, <laughs> there's nothing else out this year. Yeah. And, but, but this is something that was shot. This was um, a Broadway production that was just shot really well and edited together really well. I, I don't know if I would count that as a best not just best picture or let's put in that contender but I don't just know if I would count that as a movie because it wasn't supposed to be a movie from the start it was a play that was filmed I, I just think it's yeah. a different thing yeah yeah uh I listened to the music like when when Hamilton first started like blowing up like back in 2016 I think right yeah, yeah. and yeah I, 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 I liked it a lot yeah yeah and I was like oh this, this slaps I, I do have mixed feelings now just because you know, America and the state of it. And it's also like, oh yeah, these people were like, they own like slaves and bad stuff. And I think it's okay to like be entertained and also just be like, quick question. <laughs> what, what, is this acceptable to do in the future? I, I don't even, that's not even like a negative thing about Hamilton. I just think it's a conversation we should be having as we move forward. But um, I, I, actually, I actually like Hamilton. I know the discourse online is like really bad right now, but I'm like, yeah, I like it. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> um, I, I also like that that it's available for everyone to watch on Disney Plus. I think more Broadway stuff should be filmed because Broadway is crazy expensive. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm not gonna fly out to New York every time I want to see a play. You know? Yeah, it's crazy. So it's the, yeah, uh, no, yeah. that's cool to me. Plus, you oh, what really? What no, I that? said you should see uh, the original Cats. On the streaming service, not the not the movie cats. Oh, okay. I, I'm with you on that one, and like something like the producers with Nathan Lane and Matthew yeah. Broderick. I wish they had shot the actual Broadway production rather than make a movie version of it, because <laughs> Broadway and like st being on the stage and being filmed are two very different ways of acting, two different mediums. So everything's over exaggerate when you're on stage you're allowed to be more animated but when you're it's captured on camera it can look like you're over exaggerating mm -hmm. and and you are on camera 
So yeah, that that's something I I hope for down the line. I think things like cats uh can show like how much how disastrous uh from broadway to movie uh things can go so i'm hoping for a bright like i don't know what the future holds really uh, so this conversation is a little a little weird to have but i, I do hope that we'll get more broadway productions filmed and mm-hmm. brought to streaming services rather than trying to make a movie adaptation about it for oscar bait yeah yeah i mean I didn't even consider that, but I, I really like that point about like Cats and Hamilton. That's a complete, just like 180, like showing the two opposite sides of that. That's, I like that a lot. Um, double feature night <laughs> at, at the Waffle Press. No, yeah. um, And I think Cats was choreographed by the guy who did Hamilton. So ooh. that would actually be something to relate to. And the Cats musical movie is like the worst directed movie ever which is why i love it but also like oh my god that that needs to be like someone needs to teach that in like a film class and like here's why or like a music history class or something because that's like way too interesting to just not like recognize as like a a important moment in pop culture but uh gene what, what, what else have you been watching um yeah lately i've just been watching uh was rewatching the lord of the rings trilogy on HBO Max. Oh, cool. Been enjoying uh, HBO Max. That's uh, kind of my go-to streaming right now. I was about to ask, how, how is that? Is it, do you feel like it's worth it? And, or do you feel like they, they should have had more original stuff to pull out? Um, yeah, I think it's worth it because it has like some movies where um, it's a little harder to find, like uh, some Criterion and uh, a lot of foreign films. Like I was watching uh, Lone Wolf and Cub. I'm watching those on the streaming and um yeah i mean uh for originals i mean it has like a few i think it has like an almo one late night <laughs> not so late uh, night with almo. I, I, I watched one episode of that that was free on youtube it was uh, it was cute yeah um but yeah i don't know uh just to have like the uh kind of bolt is kind of a thing in itself for their originals yeah i mean we'll see there's still like hbo shows but yeah, just been uh, just watching a lot of movies on there and uh, like some shows like um, Space Ghosts, I'm watching that. Um, yeah, just a lot of weird stuff. Oh, nice. Uh, speaking of Criterions, I rewatched Night of the Hunter, uh, a, a 1955 film, I think, directed by Charles Lawton. It's the only film he ever directed. I think he passed away relatively soon after that. Um, it's incredible. And it's both a nightmare and a fairy tale about greed, suffocating children. Mm. Um, and it's really fantastic. And you'll feel better about the world after you watch it. And also a little more scared of it, but optimistic. And I really, really cannot recommend that enough. Um, ev- everyone should watch that. I-, I know it's not really talked about a lot, but it's one of those ones you watch and you're like, why wasn't I shown this? Like all the time like when yeah. i was studying film uh and i saw the faculty for the first time recently the robert rodriguez directed kevin williamson scripted 1998 film it's basically like scream but instead of about slashers it's about body snatching films uh it also kicks so much ass i love it to bits and i cannot wait to put it in my my spooky movie rotation because it, it's so good I, sounds I, badass big, yeah i'm a big sucker for body snatching movies so like that was my shit completely uh no no masks in that film really though oh really interesting yeah, no no masks but you know what does have masks everything we're about to talk about so Woo! in solidarity with wearing masks in public um you we're going to talk about our favorite movie masks the most badass movie masks whatever this the, the, the movie masks uh, and Brandon, on, on your Zoom, because we can put virtual backgrounds in ours, mine's a cat replacing Godzilla. Yours is The Mask starring Jim Carrey, which I didn't even consider, which is stupid of me because it's literally called The Mask. <laughs> uh, well, um, it's, not the, it's not the kind of mask you want to wear in quarantine because his mouth is still out in the open. But uh, it, it, 
I'm sure that mask is powerful enough to stop him from getting the coronavirus. So it has its plus and sizes. Uh, yeah. I love this film. I'm a huge Jim Carrey fan. I, I grew up watching his movies and uh, I was kind of a, a shy kid growing up, honestly. And his, uh, his love of life and really showing himself and being confident that really like spoke to me and that he did help me be more confident in a weird way and uh, burst out of my bubble. And uh, this is a movie that's amazing if you're, if you like to draw and you're an animator and you love Jim Carrey of comedy because his interpretation of that Tex Avery overconfident character, it, it, it's something else. And every time that character is not on the screen, the movie's kind of boring rewatching it. <laughs> he's like the Joker in the Dark Knight. Like if he's not on screen, this this is kind of boring. But when he's on it, he just lightens up, and it's so fun. And and Cameron Diaz is really good at it. That was one of her. I think that was her first movie. I believe. I think it was her first big one, at least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I love the dog in it when he gets the mask. Not to spoil it, but every everyone's seen it by now. Everyone quotes yeah. "smoking." It's party time. What? Because I gotta. Everyone loves it, and I uh, love this character, and I, I love this mask, and and people should love masks in general. Yeah, you should wear them. So say the uh, when the when the mob boss gets it, he looks like Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, that's oh, that's a deep pull, Gene. Um, I, I never would have made that comparison, but that's pretty good. Uh, okay. I will say I, I disagree with the Dark Knight comparison, but I completely okay. I didn't I didn't want to be a downer when when I saw you put that up, but I'm glad that's you okay. agree that uh like the movie is kind of boring when Jim Carrey is not on screen or the mask is not isn't happening. Mask. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Family. But uh, but Jim Carrey's great, so that's whatever. Who cares? It's awesome. <laughs> um. Gene, what, what, what is a favorite movie mask of yours? And then I'll start pulling stuff up on the Twitters right now. Um, yeah, I'll just, uh, I would say the... Uh, I think uh, he's pulling up stuff on Twitter. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would say the uh, Guy Fox mask in V for Vendetta. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, pretty timely. I just like the, uh, the look uh, it gives that character. Um, nice. A V just really uh, makes him a little like a, a very different kind of protagonist where his facial expressions just aren't there. They're just like, you know, just his words and his movements. So, All right. Uh, can you guys still hear me? Just make sure. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. We can okay, hear you. cool. Okay. Just making sure. Uh, and so, what I, when I mentioned the Twitter, uh, just for those listeners that aren't aware, uh, we asked people. Uh, about their favorite movie masks uh, also in, in solidarity with just wearing more masks in general. And so one of the first ones we got was at film buff Ben. Um, there's four images, no, no text, but I, I, I know why he put them there. And so it's Darth Vader um, uh, and Morton Joe <laughs> from Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> a, great, a great movie mask. It, not a, not exactly role models, but you know, good movie masks. Not a good uh, person. Look at a, a cool eyes, mask. Uh, one of the eyes wide shut masks. Um, and then of course the, the, the Jim Carrey mask, which is like, nice. yeah, like it's, it, it, it's great. Uh, at Mighty Mark just wanted to use this as an excuse to hype up Leslie Vernon's behind the mask, the rise of Leslie Vernon. Uh, I'll put a link to that image because okay. it's, it's funny. And then uh, one of my favorite ones is Jordan the Boy Wonder put Don West's helmet in Lost in Space 98 was and still is the coolest helmet in sci-fi now have either of you seen the 98 uh lost in space film i did but i have vague recollections of it is but that the one with uh leslie nielsen i think so joey from friends is in it okay joey from friends okay maybe uh, it's like everyone in it like heather grounds in it um, yeah yeah and it, it was like a notorious box office bomb it was like critically yeah. lambasted um, I saw it when I was a kid, and I, I don't remember anything apart from the cool monsters. But that I just like robot monsters and and the robot. He was just, and uh, yeah, like a buffer. And Joy, and Joy from Friends was in it, but he has Joy from Friends has a cool mask in it. If you play Dead Space, that's where they ripped it off from the same mask with the fold over and the. 
you know um it's a cool mask i'm not i'm not even like knocking it it's it's cool it's cool uh i'd be amazing if i like rewatched that movie and it's like some secret masterpiece like robocop or something mm, probably uh, but, not. but no no but speaking of of robocop i recently also rewatched the robocop trilogy in reverse yeah. so that way i end on a high note um the robocop Smart. mask is like great it is a little too open to also be a full recommendation for anyone <laughs> because the mouth is completely visible and you want to not do that right now mm-hmm. um but it's it's robocop's an iconic image and it's, it's a great first film and a really weird interesting second film that doesn't really work yeah and then the third film is kind of like the movie everyone says batman and robin is <laughs> uh, say i'm a, like and- I was going to say it has an animated series where he doesn't kill people. Oh, really? Yeah. That's I mean, disappointing. That's like, it, it kind of is, but that's not like a terrible idea for RoboCop. Like, have, have either of you seen RoboCop 2? Uh, I haven't seen RoboCop 2. I've okay. only seen the first, the original, and I've been told that's the only one I need to see. <laughs> Watch clips of RoboCop 2 on YouTube and be okay. like, that looks like pretty good. It doesn't come together at all, but... There's a lot of cool like robot designs and stuff, and mm. I think it might secretly be the biggest influence on Iron Man two ever. And just no one talks about it. Interesting. Um, uh, okay. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let people watch it for the first time, and then just well, this. Once you see it, you'll get what I mean. Um, but there's a lot of really great like masks and designs and face designs and stuff like that, and weird tech stuff going on it's interesting ideas but it, it doesn't work uh robocop yeah. is a masterpiece though that's that, that's a great one uh, uh brandon do you have do you have another favorite mask or two that you want to bring up while i keep scrolling through the twitter replies yeah sure uh well one of my favorite scenes with uh masks is in baby driver with uh <laughs> they're in the car and they're about to uh perform the heist and the guy's got his mask out and he gives him out it's austin power he's like hey i said mike myers like this is mike myers like no the killer dude from halloween oh you mean jason no like, that's a, <laughs> a great scene uh yeah. i know they pulled off a trailer but it makes me laugh every time but in a movie i would say point break uh is probably one of my other yeah. favorite movies with mask it's uh one of Catherine bigelow's best movies i think it is her best it's definitely one of keanu's best uh it, the original Fast and Furious film, uh, they got some cool, funny masks in it with uh, the horrible Richard Nixon and Reagan. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really, it's a, just a fun balls to the wall action movie. They don't make them like they used to. Uh, if you haven't seen Point Break, what are you doing? Put, put it on. It, it, you wouldn't have the Fast and Furious without Point Break and you wouldn't have all these we want to have John Wick without Point Break, I believe. That's yeah, that that's true. Uh, Gene, any thoughts on Point Break? Oh, um, yeah, no, I I enjoy that movie. I like to aim my gun in the air and go ah. Uh. <laughs> oh, does Hot Fuzz have any masks? Um, I don't think. Well, the killer does. Just Kate Blanch or like was it? I think Kate Blanch. Oh, there. Yes, the crime scene with Kate Blanchett in the beginning of the film. Yeah. The the investigators are all wearing masks. Oh yeah, I have to talk to you. Oh, she's over there. Maybe I have to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> You're seeing so someone good. else. Yeah. Is it Bob? Yeah. No. Does Bob look like the kind of guy to go out with? I know every line. The Hot Fuzz is fun fact. That's my favorite Edgar Wright movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's oh, it's so funny. Um. All right, let, let me let me see what what other uh, responses we got here. Uh, at Spear Hafik, uh, I believe a new new commenter on the show. Hello, welcome. Uh, Phantom of the Paradise again. Oh. The bottom face part of the mask mm-hmm. in Brian De Palma's Phantom of the Paradise is completely open, so not a a, a live action recommendation. We'll say. Mm-hmm. But a great mask nonetheless, and a great film. I, I know a lot of Brian De Palma fans actually haven't uh, uh, seen it. It's a little kind yeah. of a film Twitter gem. You know, it's a weird rock opera musical horror film. It, it's Phantom of the Opera, but with rock. And it, yeah. it rules. It's great. You shall see that. Uh, Brandon, have you seen it? I have not. Oh, it's so uh, good. I will definitely add that to the list. And uh, guy, uh, He has given me a lot of stuff to add to the list, so... Uh, one of the be- better things of talking to you guys. Oh, of many you. of many great things of talking to you yeah. guys. Oh, thank you, my friend. Uh, at 
Boba Fett, The Fall. That's the film by Tarsem Singh. And it stars, um, oh God, now I can't remember his name. Who's the, the, the lead in Pushing Daisies? This is going to bug me forever. He's the elf in the Hobbit trilogy. He's a douche in that. He's a really good actor. Yeah. If you're listening to this, you know who I'm talking about. Then, yeah. then that's that's all that matters. Um, but anyways, that's that, that's a movie that Orlando has, Bloom. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> different, different elf. His his father or whoever the, the the elf of that ruler of that region where where Legolas is kicking it in Mirkwood, I think. I don't know. He, he's a good uh, actor. It's, okay. it's on me that I can't remember. Um, but uh, he he gets a great little mask in there. Wouldn't recommend it. Kind of only has the the Robin Hood effect over the eyes. <laughs> um, I guess here, here's just a, a fun thing because I was like, we should probably try to stay away from superhero stuff just because we all kind of know. But then I was looking at it and I was like, a lot of superhero masks really have like the mouth area open. Yeah, Spider Man does it and Iron yeah, Man does it, but ba- Batman does. Batman's, he, yeah, like Bruce Wayne can afford the hospital bills, but like he's catching <laughs> that like 100%. Oh, Bane's a better example in the pandemic than yeah, Batman I, I, is. Yeah. Yeah, he's starting political revolutions for the wrong reasons, yeah, but he's exactly. still doing it. So, and he has a face mask. So, Bane, congratulations on being a role model for the first time. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, do, do we have any other masks you want to shout out? Anything else before? I, I think we can kind of start uh, uh, wrapping up right here. Um, I going to say the leather face mask. <laughs> it's, just cheap, it's not sanitary. <laughs> it's not sanitary <laughs> at all, but you're not wrong. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, just, uh, I was going to say Boba Fett just to make you mad. I, I don't hate Boba Fett. Yeah, I just, you hate Boba just, Fett? No, it's just they don't do anything with him in the movies. I like him dying in Return of the Jedi. I do too. Yeah. It's just yeah. I it's wish it was funny, still dead. Right? I wish it was still Me dead. Too. Yeah, isn't it? I think it's so funny. It's Han Solo just like Han Solo. I think people forget he's like a huge fucking nerd, and Boba Fett's like I'm the ultimate bounty hunter, and the only way he beats him is by like what, like just drunkenly like bumping into him. Like I don't know. I think that's amazing, and I I, I hope he stays dead. Boba Fett. Uh, apparently awesome. he's not. I don't, uh, I don't know if you've seen the news. Did you see? Didn't you hear his iconic spurs? Even though he doesn't have any spurs. <sighs> we don't have to talk. Oh, oh, uh, I don't know if those are his. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's how you knew. Gene and I reviewed all the Mandalorian. You should go watch it. <laughs> yeah. Links down below to our Mandalorian reviews, which we were also had the same amount of energy for. <laughs> Um, a very I, I guess I don't know. Boba Bo- Bo- Fett's a cool, cool mask. Uh, and, any others we we want to want to hype up? Obviously, I like that Brandon brought up Spider Man. That's that's my boy. Mm-hmm. He he's got it down to a pat. If you wore a yeah. Spider Man mask to keep others safe right now, like shout out to you. That's the way to do it. You know? Yeah, that'd be cool. I saw this uh, tweet about this guy who wore a Spider Man mask. Like it was just covering his mouth, but he was wearing like a, a hoodie and a Spider Man. Everything and a, a whole Spider-Man gear on, and kids at Target were apparently like, "Hey, Spider-Man, Spider-Man!" And nice. So it was like, it was cool. It was like, "Hey, wear a mask, and people will actually think you're a hero." So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, like, I, I, I think you kind of are. You know, like, shout out to that guy, and shout out to everyone who's already wearing masks. And honestly, like, if you if you haven't taken the precautions, you haven't you haven't taken it seriously, but you're you're coming around to it finally. Like, thank you. It's Better late than never. Let's just, you know, try to pick up the pace a little bit um, because we're kind of on our own here for a while. So please, please take care of each other and and just wear masks, wash your hands, share hand sanitizer if you have, if you have any, Uh, if you're out protesting, also same, same thing, same deal, Uh, social Mm -hmm. distance if possible. Uh, If you live with others, vulnerable people, don't, don't put too much pressure on yourself to, uh, to, to, to get out there. You know, people understand you know, just uh, just just be good, be good people, as uh, yeah. uh, the Dead Meat podcast says. I like them. There you go. That's another recommendation for everyone. Go check out Dead Meat, which is another podcast I really like. Yeah, because uh, we're all dead know. meat. <laughs> trying to end on a positive, but <laughs> yeah. you know, our days are numbered. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. Oh no, hey, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the thank, thank you to everyone who responded on the Twitter, on the Twitter as well. Uh, thank you to, to new patrons, Kale Smith and uh, Caleb Cunningham. Uh, 
thank you very much. It's yeah. really appreciated. So check out new Happy Amblins for the remainder of the season. That will return after an extended hiatus as well. Nice. And then keep an eye out, everyone, for the new retrospective series, which I'll just say I'm really excited about because that will be announced shortly after this goes public. Mm -hmm. uh, very and cool. Brandon, thank you very much for coming back, and and glad to see you're you're doing swell. Oh, well, thank you guys so much for having me. This was uh, the highlight of my week so far. It was definitely the uh, something different, which is good, and yeah. it's always good to be talking to you guys. Always good to see you. And we are never see each other face to face anyway, so this is kind of like for old time's sake thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then when this is over, we're all gonna have a massive beach party or something. Yes, we are. I, yeah. I miss the beach and I miss hanging out with everyone in public. Uh, but where can the people find you online uh, safely? Yeah, you can. Find, <laughs> no, don't don't find me in public. <laughs> you can no. find me. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at uh, Beastwaps. Um, post a lot of my art there and. Yeah, th thank you guys for listening to this episode. And yeah, if thank, you, thank you. I yeah. think you're a true fan if you've made it this far. Uh, I hope it wasn't <laughs> that depressing. Yeah, no, no. I, I'm, I try to keep it, like, lively. I try to keep the levity abound. And uh, I will continue to do so as I hand it off to Gene and let the people know where they can find you. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, Gene9892. And, of course, you can find me at the Diego Crespo, at the Waffle Press on Twitter, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, Patreon. I missed something right there. YouTube, SoundCloud, yeah, iTunes, YouTube. Spotify. No, did I get them all? No, I think you got it all. I think I got them all. Wow. Oh, I'm getting pretty good at that. So thank you everyone for listening. Thanks for watching. Take care of each other. We have been professionally unprofessional. Mm -hmm.